and instill more reflection and more uh, thought and making sure they are prepared for each ceremony while we debrief each one and we try to do it while incorporating the chapter. So it's almost not like set plans, but a gradual process. And it's very focused in the spring. Well, I would say um, we have a program that comes down from the nationals. It's called My Journey. Um, and that's where we break into, uh, so once a month we have a My Journey meeting where we break down into our, by grade level, so all the seniors together, juniors, sophomores, and new members. Um, and so that, it's not uh, necessarily like ritual membership development specific, but I would say that's our biggest member, way we, that we try to develop our members um, on a slightly lower level. And uh, basically what that is, um, Internationals has provided us with um, a lot of lesson plans that really tie into our three main values. Um, they're broken down to wisdom, focus, on devotion, wisdom, devotion, and achievement. Those are our three main ones. And um, all the lesson plans that we do tie directly back into that. And so we have um, elected My Journey leaders for each class who facilitate these and try to uh, bring out these values in maybe different ways than you might think of based on the way that those values are incorporated into our um, actual ritual and ceremonies. These lesson plans um, vary between the years, so the seniors are going to be more focused on interviewing and finding jobs and making sure they're prepared for the professional world, while the sophomores is more focused on time management and how to get more involved in the chapter while keeping up with your schoolwork and things like that. So you have all these events in place um, for reflection, which is great, and membership development things. What do you do with members that you know, you talked about like making everyone, you know, helping everyone grow into a pearl by the time they graduate. What about the members who aren't necessarily like wanting to grow and aren't necessarily seeing how that can benefit them and aren't really connecting to these things that you're doing? What do you do for those people? Now we're trying to like catch them a little earlier on, like when they're a new member, when they're a sophomore. And uh, I know I've sat down with a couple of new members and we've discussed what this chapter can do for you. So making sure, I think a lot of people come in with the image of a typical sorority in mind and they don't really see how it can affect you, how it can change you. Uh, and I think through like personal consistency, like, like if I share my story, they can kind of understand more where it's coming from. Uh, we do try to reach out to sisters who aren't as active, who aren't um, as super involved, and we try to make sure we keep in touch with them along with their big and their family, keeping in touch with them, making sure we're in a, like, a good touch-based relationship. I would definitely echo that. I think um, step one um, for the way that we're trying to maybe get <coughs> that further is through um, Susan's new member education programming. Um, the, my journey for the new members is actually a weekly meeting to kind of get them integrated into the chapter because they have just so much to get comfortable with before they go through initiation. And so through those meetings, through the information that they go over and how we present ourselves, um, just kind of giving the image of like, this is what we stand for. Like we are not like maybe the typical sorority you thought you were joining, but this is what you're joining and so like just so that they can be aware of it before they go through the whole process and really try to be as open as possible. But um, for the members who are already initiated our current sisters, I know I personally have been kind of looking through, seeing who's been a little less involved. Um, I've had meetings with a few of them, trying to reach out to them, um, engage them in the initiation planning process for this year. So that's definitely been pretty effective. So there's a couple girls who in the past maybe weren't um, as involved, not likely to attend a lot of things, but uh, by giving them roles in the process and making them feel more engaged and kind of sitting down and showing them like this is something that you're really good at that can help us celebrate our ritual more fully, um, that's definitely been helpful as well. Do you have any kind of, uh, as you're going through recruitment, any kind of uh, criteria that you're looking for when you're deciding whether you want to uh, extend bids to women or keep them in the process? Yeah, so our, the th we look for five things in when we're recruiting. Um, academic interest, financial responsibility, character, personal development, and, and leadership potential. Thank you. <laughs> um, so it's not like a checklist, but um, when deciding whether these girls, we should extend bids or we should invite them back, we 
look to these to make sure um, girls who like express that they want to be in leadership positions, that want to be more involved, um, we take that into consideration, not just with the positions they've held. Um, we've looked at how they present themselves. Uh, we look for making sure girls are putting school first. Um, so we look for these. Um, it's not like a all or nothing deciding factor, but it does factor into the opinion of when we uh, extend bids and invite them back to our parties. How do you um, train your sisters, or how do you have your sisters evaluate these characteristics in the women? So how do you promote that interaction? So our VP recruitment, every two or three weeks, we'll hold recruitment workshops, and these vary from how to have a good conversation, how to have a conversation where we tie in these values and how to pick up on them without directly being like, oh, how financially responsible are you? <laughs> um, so we teach sisters how to go about talking and we give them demonstrations and we have them practice with each other so that they are more comfortable doing it and that they can pick it out when they are the recruiters. Is there something in place um, in case, you, know, you mentioned like financial responsibility, in case someone's having trouble paying dues or encounter some kind of you know, accidents or something through either your chapter or through nationals that you give them resources? Yeah, so with our VP Finance, we work with, pay she works with making payment plans, seeing if they, they need smaller installments, we mm -hmm. try to make that work. Um, Alpha Chi Omega, the national organization, also has many scholarships available, and some specifically to new members um, that would help. And I, and now we try to reach out to Order of Omega with their emergency dues fund, so that um, we hope will help sisters if they ever need it. How do you incorporate your kind of purpose into organizational decisions? So. If you're trying to decide an event, do you look at it through the lens of is this fit the purpose of Alpha Chi Omega? For the most part, yes. Um, I think we don't ever hold or host our own event without really evaluating all sides of it. Like one, making sure it's beneficial to our sisters. Two, making sure it's aligned with our values. And like, making sure Sorry, I keep losing my train of thought. I'm sorry. <laughs> I think that one effective tool that we have that helps us do this is um, actually um, some paperwork that came out from National. It's called the Event Planning Pack. It's a pretty long document, but it's both a, it's like an event planning sort of uh, paperwork. So uh, first, it's and foremost, it's like a risk management tool, making sure that we're being safe and documenting. But it does add, it actually asks a lot of questions like, uh, what theme of Alpha Chi Omega is this promoting? What will sisters get out of attending this event? Uh, is there dignity in what I'm doing? Um, how will this event affect my sisters? And will this reflect um, strongly on our chapter? And so uh, in order to have any Alpha Chi Omega event, um, the executive board member or other elected position has to fill out this document, has to reflect on all these questions. And then we actually have to go before our risk management committee and present our event and kind of um, explain the rationale for the event as well as defend kind of our rationale for having the event. And so I think that that has definitely been a great way to get uh, thinking. I know personally, since I'm planning all the initiation events, I've filled out about 20 of them now. Um, and it definitely has gotten me to think about that and then as well to kind of engage the other people who are also planning these events in uh, that thought process and try to point out all of these different aspects this, of the event and why it's important. And this risk management board is made up of um, the VP of Risk Management, the President, and, and then in front of the Chapter Relations and Standards Board. And this board comprises of the VP, Chapter Relations and Standards, and a representative from every uh, every class. So there's a sophomore, a junior, and a senior representative. So they can all put in their input into every event. And Susan also sits on the board to represent our new members since they have, haven't had the opportunity to elect anyone yet out of their class. You talked about your awards for the junior and the sophomore who reflect your symphony and leadership potential. Who picks those individuals? Is it a chapter? The chapter. 
Um, yeah. We send out a survey to the chapter, so everyone in the uh, for the sophomore necklace, anyone who is not in the sophomore class votes, and everyone for the symphony award votes if, if, as long as they're not a junior. And every single sister in the sophomore and junior class is um, an option to vote for. It's not just like let's nominate three and then pick out of these kids. <coughs> so the whole chapter has the option to vote for whoever they want who thinks that they're the best fit. And what other recognition um, things do you have set up for people who maybe outside of those two awards to like celebrate the accomplishments and people living in the symphony or your values? So every week at the Chapter Relations and Standards has, um, I think we call it Brown Bear, it's a big brown bear. And um, sisters submit nominations for things people have done, like um, bringing someone soup to the hospital when they were sick, or helping them fix their laptop and taking them to the Apple Store at like really odd times. So we try to, um, so I'm just gonna think of things we've actually done. Um, so we award sisters in a small aspect, someone being sisterly, someone doing good things. I know we've also awarded um, one of our sisters for, um, and she, no one knew about it, but she always helped out with the fish pantry every morning for like for four hours. And one day our sister showed up and they were like, oh, we didn't know you worked here. So little things that not many sisters come out and say they do and other sisters should nominate them for. Anything else? All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.